We're here at the Curse Trials. We're heading into the second game. It is going to be Anijak versus Tice. If you've missed it so far, we saw Eloise versus Trump. Um, Trump uh, just kind of destroyed the Dragon Warrior that Eloise brought, even though I had, I had quite a lot of fun realizing the potential of the Dragon Warrior. It was not realized. Uh, <laughs> but, but still, we have Tice here bringing his own variation. Uh, we did not see the Revenge card in Eloise's list, and I feel I feel out of all the players bringing Warrior, somebody's got to bring this card. And even though these are professional players, I would say they have uh, right around zero experience playing uh, around Revenge. Just because it's it's an absent card. There was there's really no need for it. It didn't really clear out that much stuff. Oh, what's this? Oh, this is Mage, Freeze Mage. Is it Freeze Mage versus Secret? Pa Wait, what? It's Muster for battle. Uh, and mini. Okay, I think we're spectating the wrong game, Crip. Because I didn't even see Mage in Tice's lineup. He was playing Druid, uh, Priest, and Warrior. And uh, well, none of those have the Fire Blast icon. So I'm pretty sure, like, this, this deck doesn't work anymore because the cards are all from GBG. <laughs> yeah. I, I think right now it's just, uh, we're just, we're, this is like a staged game right now, I think. To okay. Test stuff, right? I think, uh, Amnesiac. Is just like testing right now with Ty, so they just both right. pick decks that are invalid. So, um, but it's it's a really good point to kind of bring up that um, these people are not really experienced playing around certain cards, and some tech cards can single-handedly bring such a tempo swing that they're not ex <clears throat> not expecting. But that's why we want to play double elimination because when you get to see everyone's deck the first time around, you'll get more familiar with stuff and you'll have an opportunity to play with more information as time goes on. I also believe that there's a lot of debate within the group about whether or not deck resubmissions were allowed after a certain round. Uh, I believe the final single elimination bracket, they were debating if they wanted to actually uh, resubmit a new deck list. But I think they want to really reward people who thought very thoroughly through their deck lineups that it can't immediately be countered or uh, it could uh, you know, be rewarded for being very innovative in the beginning. So they decided no resubmissions. So the decks that you have uh, right now are the ones you're stuck with at the end of the tournament, I believe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's that's probably why we saw Louis kind of queue up the the warrior three times. Um, mm -hmm. it, even though you know, kind of showing off your decks is kind of a bad thing. Um, she only showed one deck, so against her opponent, the the other loser, I think she's going to be facing the loser of uh, of this matchup here. Uh, it is going to be played off stream as well, which is very relevant because. Who, uh, if she's going to win that one, she's going to go into the decider match later today, and her opponent will only know her warrior deck. So that's not bad. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, one of the things like you have to always look at as a player is the, the silver linings of stuff as a Hearthstone, because things will inevitably go bad for you one tournament. Uh, so just take every edge you can get. Uh, being able to conceal that first round information, and guys, we do it because of the interest of time. If we were to play every single match on double elimination, it'd be ten matches, mm -hmm. uh, and we'd be dominating the entire time. Just and then you know, me and Crip would kind of be like, you know, gassed a little bit. You know, by the end of the stream, we wouldn't have anything else to say. Nothing at least insightful. So uh, we're we're cutting wow. two matches out, but we're still gonna see um, the the second round of the losers, aka the two players who go through mm -hmm. from the top end of that bracket. Uh, still gonna be good stuff. I believe we're still getting set up right now for Tyson Amnesiac. Uh, but we're about to get underway here. Looks like we're going to start things off with Druid versus Druid. And this is always a fun one. Because we see Ragnaros, that's already immediately different than what we normally see. This is kind of like the old school Druid. Yeah, Ragnaros used to be a pretty decent card, again, because of that, uh, that factor where minions that you would play would die to just damage. They wouldn't have to, like, die to damage and then die to a another damage and then die to like an AoE effect, you know? So just, just single target pummeling down health minions is so much more effective with GVG and Naxxramas out of the set. Yeah, definitely. And you know, one of the players to pay attention to are, are guys like Tice, who have played a lot of Druid Mirrors in his day. And I, like, I think a lot of people are looking at it these days and be like, well, of course everyone plays Druid Mirrors you know, in the past, like, three months. But Tice has been playing Druid Mirrors since, like, you know, 2014 mm -hmm. and a lot of Open Cups and whatnot. I think he's really got this stuff pinned down. Mm -hmm. um, already introduced with some interesting choices with being able to innervate out the Violet Teacher, followed up with Wild Growth, 
And that's a super dominant board position against a player who has no plays really until turn four. I mean, Savage was not really a legitimate play, just a 1-1 one -one token. Yeah, it's going to be Violet Teacher into Wild Growth, um, so you catch up a little bit. Um, I think the main reason why uh, I believe it's, it's Slice that made this Vile Teacher play is because there's no card that Amnesiac could have that could counter the Vile Teacher. So it guarantees the board for next turn. While if you play the Darnassus, in the best case, it may have been a little bit better overall, but it could just be straight up countered by a Wrath and, you know, be a horrible game. You know, I really wonder how good this deck is with Violet Teacher because just, I mean, just because we see a Violet Teacher doesn't mean that it's the old variant of Token Druid. It could be just Violet Teacher, a one-to-one -one replacement of Pilot Shredder. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, at the same time, it'd be really unique to see Tice go for that token-esque approach with, like, Power of the Wild, for example, as opposed to some of the other cards you'd see in Druid. Yeah, well, if, if, you, if you're running a... Oh, is that... Is that Ragnaros in both decks? <laughs> Both decks. Yeah, it is. You know, Tice, back in the day, uh, along with the rest of the Nihilum guys, they loved Ragnaros and decks. Life Coach as well, RDU, part of that group. And this was in early 2014 or 2015 when they were starting to put Ragnaros in almost every single deck that they had um, because they felt like it was really powerful in the metagame. So it's almost uh, nostalgic in a way to see Ragnaros, who is once such a overpowering dominant legendary back in the metagame at the beginning of Hearthstone. People always said like Ragnaros, Sylvanas, Cairn Bloodhoof were like the three legendaries you wanted to craft if you wanted to do very control style uh, type of decks. All right, well, here comes the second wild growth. I think the reservation is because of mind control tech, perhaps. Uh, mind control tech is actually a card that you can expect to see once again. Um, hmm. Now the keeper is still pretty good here. I yeah, keep it pretty good, but now this Darnassus Ashman will be protected, and that means Ragnaros pretty early on with no signs of the big game hunter yet. I mean, we still haven't even seen anyone draw big game hunter, let alone have it for a an legitimate answer uh, for seven or higher attack minion. So, I mean, that Ragnaros can just impose on the board multiple turns if it's hidden behind a Drew of the Claw. Uh, I'm kind of worried for Amnesiac. I mean, it's one of those yeah. things where the, the matchup has definitely swung back and forth in, in, in the past, but I'm not really seeing uh, much light at the end of the tunnel here. Also, there's a Savage we're waiting at the end for a board with at least four minions. That's pretty intimidating as well. Yeah, I don't see how this is going to work out. Um, it looks like uh, a swipe next turn might be okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. And he does actually play around that. Very good plays from, uh, from Tice here. Yeah, yeah, that, that would have been, uh, you know, cashing in immediately so that the, uh, the, the you know, he, he can be protected against it, too. And he knows that even if his opponent takes an opportunity to develop Wrath, then uh, he he would have limited plays, like three mana remaining, which back oh on turn God. three, all he had was a Farseer. Whoa! Double Savage Roar. Hmm. How much damage is that? Uh, yeah, it's, it's wasted just because it... it, it it plays so badly into a Drew the Claw. You have to Ragnaros here. The question okay. is, do you, do you Ragnaros and pass, or do you Ragnaros and double trade uh, in order to get the face hit? Yeah, I don't think the Mana Crystal matters as much. And you, you, you have two Savage Roars, so I'm liking the uh, the plan where eight damage goes to the face crypt. I'm liking okay. it. Okay. Well, there's Living Roots. <laughs> One of the few remaining cards that uh, populates the board uh, a little bit unfairly. Um, but it looks like he needs a card to be much more unfair than that. Yeah, he, he needs access to just more mana this turn. Like he, uh, can, can you get it? No. No. You can't just Emperor here. That's suicide. But it looks like you don't have any play, really. You, have, you just have no play. What about uh, what about Harrison and Living Roots? Is that too weak? Everything's too weak. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. Let, let's just let's just saying like, is that so weak that you just instantly lose by doing that? That's one of the things you have to evaluate. Oh, oh my, my god! god. <laughs> well, I mean, that's not you can't use all of that. This I turn. think this is lethal. Oh, it's I'm lethal. Pretty sure it's lethal. Yeah, because uh, the one the one attack minion trades for uh, trades Emperor. Good, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, that, but, looks yeah. like that's two over. Oh, he just actually has the requisite the hero power as well. Yep. Haha, <laughs> BM finish, I like it. 
All right, so I, you know that very first start with the innervate more than enough for Tice to snowball the board. I mean, we kind of knew as a foregone conclusion that Tice was super far ahead, but the big takeaway once again that we're we're pointing out and Crip astutely observed was you know is big game hunter even in these decks, let alone being uh you know something that you want to play against an early Ragnaros. I feel the main uh, and, reason. To, yeah. to play big game hunter is if you anticipate a lot of players playing handlock, but we've we've actually seen zero of that. Um, but I feel like handlock is still a very playable deck. Um, you know, you, you lose the heal bots, which is kind of a big deal. Um, I think it makes your matchup against aggro pretty bad as opposed to what it is on ladder right now. But I think everything else is pretty good. Um, like handlock just destroys a lot of the slower decks. And there are a few slower decks out there. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if, if some players just ran, you know, three decks that countered just regular mid-range decks. Yeah, uh, that would also be cool to see. Although, I again, it comes down to how brave some of these guys feel about their decks. Uh, speaking of being brave, Tice has to go up after witnessing another Dragon Warrior be demolished. But, you know, I'm going to be looking for... Oh, there it is! Big game. Oh, the team hunter. It, it survived. <laughs> and this is a this is a good time to have it. Um, you know that there are a few dragons that are uh, in the big game range. But I feel with this hand, you're probably going to have to play the BGH for tempo. Uh, if if it calls the situation calls for it, yeah. I mean, realistically, you could also pick into a four drop that uh, the wild growth allows you to to play. So we'll see. We'll see. In the meantime, uh, it looks like already Tice has that Tice-ish flavor where he really likes being defensive and controlly. It doesn't surprise me at all that he also picks like a very defensive control deck to bring with the, uh, the the Dragon Warrior, which is a little bit faster than normal Control Warrior, but still very defensive overall. But things like the Farseer, that's such like a Tice thing to do. He likes putting Farseer in Druid. He likes putting Farseer in his apparently his Dragon Warrior. Uh, pretty cool stuff. I think this is something that people don't really identify immediately when they think of the players like that, but it's a very big trademark. Kind of like an artist with a signature uh, MO in some of the paintings. Wow. Yeah, very artsy. Um, now, I feel like even though the Fiery War Axe is not a great play, that the coin has a lot of value because your hand is pretty clunky. So I would like to see the Fiery War Axe here, but I think the monkey would make the biggest presence on the board. Mm. Well, you also have to think to in anticipation of what you want to, you know, what you can expect on turn four. Um, oh, Tiger! Yes! This is cool. So, uh, one thing that Amnesiac has actually been doing for a while now, for about a month and a half, was climb to top 50 legend with Stranglethorn Tigers. Uh, I think he replaced Azure Drakes in his deck, so he doesn't... He might probably have replaced that all together, like no drakes and just have striker throw tigers. And that just extends your combo range to be that much higher, like 21 guaranteed if you can get it in late stage of the game. Not to mention, there were a lot of minions that the 5-5 five five would trade into super well uh, yep. as you battled on. So it's an underrated card as well. I like it. Yeah, the striker tiger is considered uh, a pretty good card in... Uh... In most uh, most places in the game, it used to be used in a lot of the mid range uh, hunter decks. In fact, I actually used it in mid range hunter on uh, on the release of PGT, and that worked out pretty well for me. Don't you mean on the the, the road to legend? Crips yeah. Road to <laughs> it was Stranglethorn Tiger into it was Coin Stranglethorn Tiger into Ram Wrangler. I remember watching yep. that stream. You got some pretty awesome stuff. Yeah, Tiger was like uh, the only the only beast that really couldn't be removed. Um, like even high main seems to be removed much more than than the tiger. The tiger would only be removed with uh, like doomsayer combos from mages and like brawls from warriors. That's about it. Nothing else would really yeah. kill it effectively. Makes sense. Uh, another minion that's pretty tough to remove here is the ancient of war. Is this the opportunity to use that? And and would you squeeze into living roots here? Because the alternative was to play removal on the board, like force of no, nature. I, I don't it's like not living roots. Um, This oh, game okay. is so much trouble. This is like the ultimate brawl board in, on five mana. Oh, that's a good point. Five mana brawl boards. Hmm. 
Yeah, considering that you eliminate on average a lot of stats from the Druid, if you can just like 50% chance to eliminate 10 or 11 power from the board mm -hmm. on their side is such a big deal. Um, especially because one of the things that is really key is that if you're playing Stranglethorn Tiger and you don't have cards like Azure Drake in the deck, your card draw is really limited. And Druid, one of the ways it loses to Warrior, that's like any kind of defensive control warrior, fatigue, dragon control, etc. One of the ways it loses is it just gasses out. That's why Ancient yep. of Lore is one of the best cards in the matchup. So it's like you already have lack of card draw. Uh, you might really be starving later on. Oh, wow. This is a coin armor up shield slam here. With a bash. <laughs> I mean, Ancient of War drew a lot of uh, removal pieces, but at the same time, Druid used Innervate to get this out. So Tice also feels like he can spend more cards to remove it. Whoa, big time draw here. Ancient Huge of War draw. Also, at the same time, though, um, the, the Ancient of War still dealt the five face damage. I mean, there really wasn't much of a loss there. Uh, what I'm surprised is that Amnesiac is so reserved with this attack from the Stranglethorn Tiger. Like, yeah, don't you I mean, have to go through these taunts anyway? That is true. Um, and it, But, you know, it, it, it's kind of like one of those things where stealth timing is such a key thing. Like, if you think about Shave Nax Ramus, for example, you start attacking right around the 5-5 five, five range for a lot of decks. Mm -hmm. um, and I think because he has such a really good convenient trade, with the three five into the or the five five into the three five, he definitely picks this up. But now that he sees, he knows like Blackwing Corruptor is possible, even another bash. So I think he was just really calculating it. But I don't think you're oh, in a position where you can perfect do that. here. Oh, it's ridiculous. Yeah, perfect. And you have another force of nature drawn, so you have twenty one damage follow up, which is uh, exactly where they'd be if they just armored up with a minion. Yep. Um, no dragon, by the way, for Twilight Guardian to activate. Well, the Farseer is good enough, and possibly the Slam can draw something as well. Oh, there's a dragon. JK. Did I say that he didn't have a dragon? <laughs> um, yeah, mana efficiency, mana efficiency should dictate that the, uh, the Farseer is played. Oh, no! There it is! Ragnaros again! <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, Warrior already used Shield Slam and Bash. It's very clear that if he had Execute of some sort, the Warrior would have used it very cleanly on the Ancient of War. I like it. Hits face! I mean, that's kind of what you want to do, but does that give Warrior a chance to climb back on the board? Hmm. Tice needs Execute right now, right? That, is that basically it? Uh, uh, no, he's, he's still alive. Uh, he just needs, uh... He's Ragnaros to not be cruel. That's about it. He also chooses to slam uh, Ragnaros instead of the Ancient of War. Oh, sorry, Ancient of Lore. Um, and yeah, now the Lore, I guess it's because he feels like the Lore can't kill the, the dragon, so he has an opportunity to draw and to execute. The and this was a backup plan as well, to be able to remove the Ragnaros, so that's perfectly fine. Are you uh, dead? You no, you are not. You're not dead. I think you're at one. Oh, yeah, um, one. Okay. You have to use six damage. So the full combo is 21. Right. Um, right. So it, he's effectively at 22. Mm -hmm. Farseers. I mean, Farseer, when you don't have access to a lot of taunts like Belcher and Healbot, is still a pretty underrated card like it still grabs you pretty co commanding tempo early on Druid doesn't have that many uh three drops or they like to do i love this that healing the ancient of lore so that way your board's as resilient as possible mm -hmm. and again uh same exact yeah, there's, position as there's no outs here anymore this yeah. is done yeah the warrior falls again warrior zero four in the tournament so far by the way if you're anticipating druid as well you have to imagine that this deck is even equipped Welcome to try and to kill Druid. And you know, like, Warrior got the stuff it wanted once again. Fiery War Axe on turn two. It got mm. the early game curve with, like, the Fierce Monkey, two Twilight Guardians, a Blackwing Corruptor. Like, what else What else do you want? Like, they even have Bash and Shield Slam. Like, it's, it's at this point where you just realize that Druid is so overpowering in a matchup of pressuring. 
and ending with the combo that nothing changes, even if you take away the pilot shredder and shave next round. Um, I think you're right, but I think if the warrior had an execute for like the Ancient of War, or something as devastating as like a Black Knight, things would have been quite a bit different. You think Black Knight? You, you think we'll see a Black Knight in this tournament? I think we've seen a taunt minion in every single deck except that face shaman. Yeah, so. but they can't they can't tech it in retroactively. Like uh, yeah, now that they see decks, they can't change anything for the entire mm -hmm. tournament. So do, I'm just saying, do you think we'll see one Black Knight? I th I think so. I think someone uh, someone has so made that it. guess. Uh, it's also not really not really a card that you invest much into putting in your deck in a lot of cases. Oh. Um, like I think you can put Black Knight in your Druid deck, and you wouldn't suffer that much. All right, this is pretty awesome. Um, okay, so first of all, dragons are continuing to be showcased here by Tice. Again, he's a control player. He doesn't really like playing the aggro stuff. But this is such an interesting next level call. Playing Miracle Rogue uh, yeah, in a meta where it. it could very well be very dominated by aggro because there's no heal bots and belgers and whatnot. Uh, really interesting stuff here for Amnesiac. Well, Miracle Rogue does does reasonably well against a lot of the aggro decks. Um, at least they used to. Uh, I feel like when GVG came in, uh, the minions were just too aggressive, and it was that tipping point that the Miracle Rogue couldn't win over. But with GVG out and the Max out, more importantly, I feel like Miracle Rogue is in a fine position. Um, there was there was you know that talk about what. Um, cards the existing decks are losing, and uh, like, you know the BM heal. Um, the Oil Rogue is only losing oil. Now that's a pretty important card if you're playing Oil Rogue because I mean that's that's what the deck is is named <laughs> after. Um, but all all the other cards are still there. The structure is still there. The combos are still there. The unfair tempo cards and board clears are still there, and those are all the tools that were originally used by the Miracle Rogue. Yeah, really good observation. And if you think about Rogue, uh, they're still one of the strongest classes based off the core set of cards. Preparation hasn't changed, backstab hasn't changed, and those zero mana spells are super potent. And they keep things like the Tomb Pillager. That card is so fun to play with if you're a Miracle Rogue. It gives you so many more options. It's like having two extra preps in your deck for the effective cycle and the mana gain. But one thing that is interesting is the Cold Blood to me. Um, that's not a card that you see very often, even in the traditional Miracle Road decks. Which makes me think that this is not the Maligos version with spell-heavy stuff like the, you know, Shivs and the Sinister Strikes. It might even be like a good old Arcane Golem or a Leroy or something, I'm not sure. Because the, the, the Cold Blood is extra damage, right? Mm -hmm. For the charge. Yeah. People started using the South Sea Deckhand, but that was only because it was a great way to combo oil. But if you don't have oil, then that changes up a lot. Um, it is, in my opinion, most likely the arcane golem way of doing things. Okay, well, uh, you know, this still doesn't change much for the priest. The priest is going to hate its life. I mean, Tice is probably already rolling his eyes from the very get-go. Like, you know, he just didn't want priest to hit into rogue. That's probably still one of the toughest matchups that you can anticipate because rogue is so good at stalling against the priest with things like flurry and priests can't close out the game because they lack a lot of burst so uh, very very interesting that uh, Tice can still build up a cage for the board but I anticipate it starting to swing because with two preps and a lot of spell power with stuff coming up it can be hard for um, for Tice to truly gain an opportunity to close the game in the coming turns yeah oh my god I'm having flashbacks to 2014. <laughs> it's just that um, Amnesiac's going to have to burn like his whole hand. I don't know if that's going to work too well, to be honest. Uh, oh, you mean because his hand will be too full? No. Um, he, he has to like start the pressure train. He has to start like the mm. auctioneer draw engine stuff as soon as possible. And if he does that... I think he has to do it next turn, which means he has to burn a prep on Conceal, which sounds pretty good, but usually the turn right after, you're you're going to have to make some huge plays. So 
Gotcha, whatever man. whatever he draws from this auctioneer is is really going to decide the game. If he draws like a deadly poison and a blade flurry from the from the auctioneer plus preparation shenanigans, he'll be in great shape. But if he doesn't, um, I think the priest actually has developed too big of a board. Well, the thing is, priest can't really kill this auctioneer this turn. And if you, and the thing is, you will keep the auctioneer. Well, I guess you can with light bomb. Well, is light bomb no, no a GPG light bomb. card? It is. So, you can't actually deal with it then. Um, nope, GVG. Bomb Lobber's GVG. Oh, yeah, you're right. So, it's uh, just Octonite nice Soul Priest here, like the be good old days. No, the oh. good old days was uh, Sylvanas, death your own Sylvanas, and you become the miracle class. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. That was pretty funny. Two conceals? Wow. This, this really is like the old school version of where you have the Miracle Rogue, two conceals, like Leroy Jenkins, and even a Van Cleave sometimes to help you in there. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to see the finisher of choice. There's Sap. Uh, it's looking pretty good. Amnesiac is still missing a few pieces, but he definitely got a few of the ones he needed. I think this, I think this is going to be good enough. Um, yeah, yeah he, he probably just sap out the board. And Freeze has no play this turn. Oh, just kidding. They drew the uh, Blackwing Corruptor, but still not enough. Like if that if that Blackwing Corruptor even did more damage than three, like five or so, I'd still say <laughs> uh, Priest is in trouble here. I don't even know if I'd heal the taunt here. Like you know, you know that thing's getting sapped 100. percent Just in case they don't. But with Gadgetan starting with seven mana. Oh, there it is. Now Deadly Poison is like perfect. Yeah. I don't. I don't even know if you actually want to sap right now. I think you might want to sap later. But again, I, you, I guess you were at 12, but like what burst is the priest going to have, right? There's no burst here. Well, you can put him on a two turn clock, I think, as well, if you just like double cold blood and then conceal afterwards mm -hmm. uh, and then just get a guaranteed 24 damage in. Uh, it's like almost certain that you'll be able to draw onto some lethal capabilities here. Well, you can do one cold blood anyway. Um, I think the Blade Flurry play is, is, is by far the best here. Mm. And you have the attack, you have the Blade Flurry, then you have the Conceal again. Yeah, that one also makes sense too, given that the spell power gives you enough to clear. And there's just really nothing you can do here, uh, unless you have some way to immediately destroy that Conceal Gadget Sin. But it can't be targeted, and I don't really think there's a you card in Priest's Arsenal. Two saps. Um... Yeah, I mean, I think the only way that Tice would win this is if he drew an Azure Drake into a Mind oh, Blast boy. and just Blast. ended it with six damage off Mind Blast, three off Holy Smite. <laughs> that would have been the sickest thing ever, but I, I don't think that's a card that's ran in uh, in Dragon Priest, even in, in uh, this type of tournament. Nah, definitely not. <laughs> Especially if Tice is playing, like, you know, Nefarian as well as just Sarah. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, it seems to be more like just drag out all of your opponent's minions and just outvalue them late game with stronger minions. So that means one deck remains for Amnesiac, who's on the verge of uh, eliminating Tice from the winner's bracket. He has the Shaman left, but Tice also has equipped his deck to keep in mind that aggro is very prevalent. The, the biggest yeah. strength that Dragon Priest has is to kill aggro. It's not necessarily to win control matchups, so um, right. perhaps and Tice still feels comfortable. And I think Dragon Warrior does the same thing. I think Dragon Warrior actually excels at beating up small minions, which is exactly what the Shaman deck has. Even though we've seen this matchup go towards the Shaman's direction uh, earlier, um, Trump was, was literally on exact lethal, waiting on exact mana with every single card in his hand being played. So, I mean, it, that, that was a game that would be decided by one hit point. Um, and uh, it could go absolutely the other direction. A Wrathy Weaponsmith. Now, this card is pretty awesome in uh, other formats of Hearthstone. I, I look, I love this card in Arena, for example. Yep. Um, yeah, but the best. Uh, what, do, what do you think? What do you think about it in in like this type of format? Do you like it when you see it? The Wrathy Weaponsmith. Um. Well, I think it's all right. I think the main thing to take away is that you're comparing it to King's Defender. And if you look at King <laughs> Defender and Arathi Weaponsmith, I love Arathi Weaponsmith. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, 
But, uh, you know, oh my god, once again, Fiery Vorax off the top of the deck on turn two. I mean, that's it's, at this point, it's just following a cycle of memes where it's like Warrior always has it. But that's also a really strong start. Two Totem Golems to, to begin the game here. Mm -hmm. We have not seen... Um... We have not seen any openers with uh, tunnel trogs though, and that's really where it gets completely out of control with shaman. Yeah, the uh, the tunnel trog with the overload mechanics are bananas. Uh, but you know, one thing to consider is that Amnesiac is also keeping his deck very board centric for his uh, for his aggro shaman. The first thing that you know jumps out to mind is just the elemental destruction. This is a card that. Uh, Kalento started using a lot in the end of 2015 with his aggro shaman because a lot of times it'd be like the difference maker that your doom hammer can get through or if you have a charger like that uh, oh you have to use a rock biter here rider. yeah I'm actually surprised that the horse rider is not in more lists um, I feel like it's it's such a good card. Of course, it's good in any aggressive deck, but I feel it's also good in mid range and control decks as well. Like Arjun Horse Rider, I think is is quite fine, even in Druid, for instance. Uh, yeah, why not? It also gives you like Drew the Claw and uh, Argent Rider. Like all those charge minions give you more Savage War potential. So it doesn't seem like an awful choice at all. I think here you'd probably just want a totem. You'd want to set up a bigger board uh, before you play down that totem. Oh, the taunt totem. Now, if they had a weapon, that'd be a bigger deal, but right now it's uh, definitely inconvenient for the warrior. Well, I think there's a good chance that the warrior will play shield slam for one on it. <laughs> yeah, why not, right? You have to remove uh, minion damage off the board. Yeah, uh, just give yourself a higher chance of survival. I mean, it's kind of like we saw the executes in Eloise's hand when she played this matchup. Execute couldn't do even one damage, and she would have loved for it to do one damage. So uh, in that, in this case, that might be a difference maker. Don't underestimate how much damage Shaman needs to get through the the armor of what Warrior is going to do. Mm -hmm. It seems like a pretty clear cut play. Um, the oh oh, he wants to keep the taunt. I see. All right. Well, he could have pushed for one extra damage, but uh, yeah, he would have lost the taunt minion. You know, the taunt minion protects the flame tongue, so I, I can actually get behind this pretty well. Um, he plays the leper gnome, thinking it's the most likely minion to die. Um, I think this is um, this is a pretty interesting call because the most likely minion to die might be the taunt. Like he disagrees, though. Yeah, if they had Blackwing Corruptor, I think you also want to, would target the Flame Tongue. So that way you can reduce the most damage off the board. Uh, not a good draw here for Amnesiac. Gets, like, Abusive Sergeant. He, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's good. damage, but you'd want, like, Doomhammer or something really hyper at the moment. No, I think this is fine. I think the Abusive goes on the Leper Gnome. The Leper Gnome kills the Tharson, does 2 damage face. He then pushes for 6 damage, and then he can even Lightning Bolt for another 4. He gets up to 10, which I believe... Um, oh, he's just going to go for all-out damage. <laughs> it's like, it, 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 you, it's no We Know Jackson, Warrior, that's for sure. So you don't have to be worried too much. You can spend it... Uh, pretty liberally, and you don't lose two, You don't lose any damage on board because the Taunt Totem, it just has zero attack, so the buff from the Flame Tongue Totem slides in. Well, uh, Blackwing Corruptor is some removal here. What do you want to do, though? Yeah, that's a good what? point. No. Now, are there really that many things you need to remove? Actually, don't. You don't need to remove much, but Tice being Tice is going to have to make the safest play possible. So we have to we have to analyze what that would be. What is the safest play possible here? Um, the Farseer gains you three life, and the Alexstrasza's charge gives you. Well, if it kills off the Taunt Totem, and you use Blackwing Corruptor, I mean, Alexstrasza's no, charge has more impact on the board. But I think it average gives you two life. Yeah, but Tice is going to make the safest play possible. It's just no doubt about that. I think he's even going to use yeah, the Tharson to kill that because now with the with the totem gone, uh, he doesn't have three damage available. Oh, that's, that's not, not lethal damage. 
no, he has 8 damage. 6 on board, and killing his own Leopard Gnome with the destruction is exactly 8. Um, I feel like he might make that play. Ooh. I think uh, if One you're tight, you can definitely assume that the warrior... Or sorry, you can assume that the shaman has like silence or other things. Because why, why, why would you not play on 8 mana that's not direct damage of some sort mm -hmm. to close out the game? Oh, man. I think you bash an armor up. Oh, God. Yeah, that's actually not too bad, I think, because you can stay up to what looks like to be uh, 8 health. And that's like, if your opponent didn't have Lava Burst or something like that last turn to play, uh, you're still feeling pretty confident. He would have played draw cards, he would have played minions, he would have played spells, he would have played Doomhammer. He was like on the exact mana to do it. So I, I'm pretty comfortable bash and armoring up here. Even though the, the, it looks like, why wouldn't you just play Blackwing Corruptor? You just want to keep armoring up every single turn as much as possible. Even kill that spell power totem. Yeah, absolutely love that card. Yeah, that is the most defensive play possible. And Knife Chuggler is oh, not going to yeah. cut it. But the Elemental Destruction is pretty good. It is going to clear out the board. And uh, he's going to get one damage in from a juggle at least. So you're going to be... Representing three damage, your opponent will have nine life, assuming he hero powers. And that means you have to draw six damage with your next card. Or it's actually set, uh, five because the one one token survives. No, shield block is probably it. I think that's oh my be God. just enough HP to uh, sustain. And a fierce monkey! So oh, clutch! Fierce, fierce monkey doesn't actually do much here. Um, well, he doesn't know I that. I think he he has to save he has to save the rock biter. I think he's got to go for the doom hammer play at this point. I think you got to earth shock the monkey and just go face and hope you get a, a doom hammer. You're just not winning the game otherwise. There's just no way you can win. Probably yeah, because even that one damage might matter. Let's see if he goes up to. 14 next turn if you don't do that and you're gonna need the doom hammer to hit over three turns then uh if, if because he's gonna armor up out of that range that one damage is pretty relevant bash oh the bash oh well let's first see what varian rin's gonna bring to the battlefield nope uh or not and nope and nope <laughs> <laughs> some armies of stormwind huh yeah, that was, you know, Ancient of Lore Senior. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah, I guess that works. Uh, just armor up one more time so he can optimize his life gain. Uh, recognizing on two cards, there's no two card combination that can outright kill him. He has yeah, to draw is. Ancestral Knowledge into something. Yeah, it has to be Ancestral Knowledge into Doomhammer Rockbiter, and that actually is lethal. <laughs> he could have top decked him horribly. Yeah, that would have been crazy. <laughs> That would have been nuts, but it's you know, still not, possible. Not but uh, if he plays Bash, I think he's just out of range. Wait, no, he has a Bash is only one HP. That same thing could happen. Putting him at one HP. <laughs> oh, you mean the ancestral knowledge play? Yeah, that yeah, that could it, still happen here. The dream is real. But I mean, if if I'm Tyus, I'm playing like super duper safe, right? Yeah, but yeah. even still, you're, you're at 16. That's how much damage you do with that ridiculous draw combo. Is this the last hit? I mean, I don't think there's any other thing that could happen here. You're just dead next turn as the Shaman, so... Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Uh, uh, hex. Hex. hex! Oh, looks like you have another chance, I guess, but... Yeah, I think you're gonna be uh, too overloaded to do it next turn. Right? Yeah, you're too overloaded, and and I think you're dead anyway to to the, to right. the just the board. Slam and fiery war axe lets you get through it pretty effectively, and then you can kill it off. So that's gonna wrap up game number four. We have a tied series, and Dragon Warrior Crip gets its first win. We knew that wow. this could happen, but it actually <laughs> did, and now we don't even know what to do with ourselves. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> one and four, not not bad, not not great. Okay, it's bad. Yeah. All right, but um, he's still got the Dragon Priest. 
I kind of feel like, well, going into it, I felt like the Dragon Priest might have a better matchup. Um, but it looks like the Warrior has more um, health recovery uh, with the bashes and the shield blocks. The Priest, we haven't really seen much of that. I mean, Light of the Naru is GBG, right? And we haven't yes. seen Holy Fire. Good point. Holy Fire, it could be a way that you stay alive in that aggro. Holy Fire is such a, a interesting like inclusion because it doesn't directly fit the Dragon Priest plan. Dragon Priest has very s strong game plan of building a board of overstatted minions mm -hmm. and then using the hero power to just make sure that those minions keep getting very effective trades. Uh, you know, even cards like Holy Smite, for example, that card was u was included in the very beginnings of uh, GVG and, and Dr Dragon Priest, but then you have Vol'jin in it, but now Vol'jin's not included because I think that's a GVG legendary, so mm -hmm. it's like you, you can't really, you don't have as many options as you used to. Well, this is a pretty sad play. This is the North Shire Helior North Shire play. <laughs> Uh, I mean, would you holy smite this down? You, you want to do the holy smite and the uh, the twilight whelp? Well, m maybe not twilight whelp because that's your dragon activated for other stuff. But maybe just to keep the board clear, so that way you, you can't like lose it to abusive sergeant of any kind. Mm. I wonder. I think because twilight the whelp. If the shaman wants to use his hero power to kill twilight whelp, I think you just win. Because then you Farseer, and then you yep. draw a card. Yeah, m maybe. Yeah, I mean, you're I, not I playing like the Twilight Whelp well until turn four at best. And it's not really worth much. All right, well, this is this is the slower play. This is kind of like the standard play. Yeah, but I mean, you do get punished by the worst possible scenario, which is Abusive Sergeant with another one drop. And. Uh, Amusiac is going to commandly seize the board with more minions coming up afterwards. Now I think you really no, now you have triple one drop. Now it's actually great. Yeah, big pickup right now because North Star Cleric challenges everything. Okay, the Holy Smite on the abusive probably means that um, uh, Tice is playing Shadow Madness. I think otherwise uh, you'd want to oh, take the damage gotcha. up front. Because the uh, you can take the leper gnome and, and then avoid the damage. Mm -hmm. But is there a scenario where you? I mean, so you're saying generally you would kill the leper gnome first? I think so, especially with farseer uh, as your next play. Because if uh, if you have good trades and farseer is not part of healing minions, um, you'd farseer your face and yeah. Well, I would I would probably say no matter what you want to farseer your Don't face. Worry, I mean, I mean, uh, this is probably a little bit too much of a blanket statement, but you know your opponent is playing elemental destruction as well. So if you value your board a little bit too much and you're not healing your own face, you might overextend a little bit. Whoa, well, no, that's a really big draw as well. Power with shield, so that way you can cycle through your deck and uh, use your mana efficiently. So pretty good stuff here. Tice not gonna just gonna go ahead and favor his board position a little bit and use power with shield second, but I don't think it would have changed the play at all for three mana. Well, there's wild power mancer, but there is the doom hammer with the druid hero power to give it that extra two damage. Similar wow, to good point. That is the best hero power with the, with the doom hammer, isn't it? Yep. <sighs> well, okay, it's it's technically the same as a hunter hero power. It just gives you an extra armor you, piece. You gain armor. That's that's just better then. Yeah. Assuming you can hit phase every time um, mm -hmm. and not run into Twilight Guardians. Actually, it's great if you run into Twilight Guardians because you can just kill them with one volley of hits from a Doomhammer. Yeah, I'm saying, assuming you're not running into taunts over yeah. and over, you'd yeah. rather just get prevent lethal. Yeah. <laughs> But Amnijak is instead going to uh, build the board a little bit. I think he recognizes that Totem Golem gets increasingly worse the longer the game goes. And even though he gets overloaded by one, he can still coin Doomhammer the following turn. So this, I, I, there's a lot of merit to this play. I like it. And also, the Totem Golem doesn't even oh, die. Oh, Harrison! <gasps> Whoa! That's going to be game! <laughs> well, 
usually it is, but there has been very uh, you know small amount of games where I have Harrisoned a, a Doom Hammer only for your opponent to draw Doom Hammer the following turn and kill you anyway. So, but it, it is a very hard. Play it. Oh my God! He's gonna double Man. tap here. <laughs> That, that is that is a rain nab play. I five see mana take twice. eight. <laughs> that oh, oh, here it comes! Oh, there's the jump! Oh, oh the miserable yeah, amnesiac so there. Yeah. Oh, man. Is he going to overdraw cards? I don't think so. But it's so funny, man. What do you, no, what I think do you he's drawing do? Exactly, exactly to ten. There's, there's a one drop. No overdraw. <laughs> oh, man. And guys, this is the deciding game as well. <laughs> Rock Fighter. Little bit less useful now. <laughs> wow. There's, there's no way. I mean, I mean, just look at that. Yeah, one of the biggest criticisms against Dragon decks in general is the lack of card draw. Because you can't draw enough cards to get all the benefits consistently from Dragon effects. You're going to inevitably hit a Black Wing Corruptor you can't activate. Or even like, you know... The, sometimes you just get an awkward curve where you have like no dragons to activate Wormrest Agent, and then you draw the dragon, but then you can't play the dragon like Twilight Garden because it doesn't activate other stuff if you if you drop it. So it's like all these different things. But now in Priest have so many cards, you have the option to use optimal removal, and you can get all the dragon synergies. This game looks like it's a lock for Tice. That Harrison Jones was such a big deal to shut down the Doom Hammer. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering if. If there's any other play here, I must consider. It's, it's uh, three off lethal for the for the priest by Cabaling the Charger. Mm -hmm. But it didn't look like he had any way to do any extra damage aside from that. Yeah, I think if you also just play it slow, like you know, keep healing your own phase and playing defensive, that's also a white way you can win too. I don't think there's really any rush. But ideally, you'd probably kill uh, the, the Shaman quicker, just because even with three or four cards, they're still very potent. But I like this play a lot. Yeah. And also, um, Elemental Destruction can really wreck the board, though. So there is a way for uh, Amnesiac to reset the board here. Maybe maybe start coming back? I don't know. It's, it's still really tough. That's the first, first viewing of the Tunnel Trog. It is there, guys. <laughs> Turns out Tunnel Trog, which wins games by itself on like turn three, has made the cut. Yeah. <laughs> well, looks like that's going to wrap up the series here. Game five goes to Tice, who moves on to play Trump, and Amnesiac will fall to the lower bracket. But what a fun back and forth series. You know, when we saw Priest and Warrior, immediately I was thinking the dragon stuff again. But uh, this time it actually works out for a person that brought dragon synergies. Barely. I mean, Barely. that was pretty close. Hey, I mean, if you win by an inch or a mile in Hearthstone, a win is a win. Uh, certainly in win. this kind of format where elimination brackets are the way you couldn't go through. So, uh, you know, congratulations to Tice. Uh, that wraps up our second match of the day, which brings us yeah. to Forsen versus Brian Kibler coming up after this break. want to give a big shout out to Geek Fuel uh, for giving us a lot of support for the event. You can check out all their stuff. Uh, you know, you can get $50 worth of gear uh, all kinds of cool little trinkets and, and, and neat little stuffs and souvenirs. So check it out. Thanks again to Geek Fuel. And a big shout out to Curse as well uh, for being able to support the event. I'm Frodan, and with me is Crip. And when we come back, we're going to have our third match of the day. Once again, Forsen versus Brian Kilber. It's going to be a good one. Don't go anywhere.